here's where it gets fun. Up until this point, we've talked about permissions in Octal and Symbog format, and a lot of tutorials will kind of stop there. It's kind of the very introductory or basic part of, of permissions. But this is where it gets a little more fun. There are other special permissions that we can set for our files, and those are going to be SUID, so for set UID, user ID, set GID or SGID, and the sticky bit. Okay, and each of them have their own special uses and, and ways that we can make uh, take advantage of them. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, so I just kind of give you a quick example. So set UID and set GID bits. Uh, the set UID means that when an application or a script is run, it's going to be run as the use as the owners of the file, as opposed to running as the user that executed it. Okay, and we'll we'll do an example to show you what that means. Um, but for example, one common use of this of this set UID bit would be the password command. Password command very powerful allows us to change a user's password, but every user should be able to change their own password. So when a and a non-privileged user, right? So somebody who is not uh, root can uh, wants to change the password. They execute the password command, but to the system that execute as the root user, allowing you to do things like update the shadow file and update all the little bits and pieces that requ are required to update your password. The set GID bit. One use case for that would be that if we have a directory with this set GID bit, set group ID bit turned on. That means that every file in that directory will be created with the group ownership of the parent directory, not of the user that created it. And again, we'll see what this looks like once we get the command line. And the sticky bit, uh, that means that regardless of the permissions for the group, let's say, only the owner of a file can delete that file from a directory. And we'll, again, that, a common use case for that on a system these days is a slash temp. Everybody can write a slash temp, um, but it would be it would be detrimental if everyone can also remove everybody else's files from slash temp. And we'll see what this looks like on the command line here. Okay. All right. So uh, setting the UID, GID, and sticky bit looks something like this. All right. So we have setting the SUID bit, so U plus S, the SGID bit, G plus S, and plus T would be the sticky bit, right? Um, T for just, S was already taken, so we use T for a sticky bit. Okay, let's take a look at this, what it looks like on the command line. So, I, did I write this yesterday? Home. So let's talk about the SUID bit first. Let's go to home, make right. Now I wrote this command, or I found a demo for this command yesterday. Uh, essentially, it is a small C file. Hmm that kind of highlights that how we use the SUI, that set UID bit, okay? So if we look at our directory right now, we'll notice that we have an S here. And so we have an S and that's gonna denote that we have a set UID bit on this file. Depending on your highlighting, you might have it colored here as well, but predominantly you're gonna look for the S here in the, over the owner's execute bit, okay? And so right now, this command is owned by root, and the group ownership is root as well. And we have a second command for no SUID. We have, if you notice here, the X is normal, so that means we have no set UID bit on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to become the vagrant user. user. Right. And then so in here, if I do use the ID command to tell what my UID is, so my UID is 1,000 for the vagrant user. If I run the command set UID, no, no SUID, so that, again, this is one without the set user ID bit enabled, it tells me that my real UID is 1,000 and my effective UID is 1,000 as well. Okay? Again, when we run a command, it's executed as that user. Okay? Now, with the set UID bit, if I run it set UID demo, Notice a little difference here. So the first part, the real UID, right? So the user I'm at, the user I am is 1000. The effective user ID or the user I'm running at is zero, which would be for root, right? So I do ID root, does that work out? Yep. Its UID is zero. So that's kind of how this set UID command or set, uh, bit works, right? Again, we the command runs as the owner, 
not as a user running that file. Uh, and again, the other case where you may want to use that, let's say you have a script or an application that always needs to run as a specific user. Well, you can go ahead and set UID bit for that script, for that application, and then any user that runs it is going to run as the user it needs to all the time. Okay, let's get out of here. So now taking a look at the set GID bit. All right, so the interesting as well. So I'm going back to my root directory here. Let's go into perms and my directory. So let's take a look at what we have here. In this directory here, let's go ahead and change the, let's, like, let's clear it out first. How about that? Yeah, all right, that's all our stuff. Cool. All right, now on this directory here, our permission sets are gonna be read, write, execute, read, write, execute. Okay, but I wanna turn this the set GID bit on for this. So I'm gonna do a chmod group plus S for directory. Okay. And now we see, much like before on the, on the owner, we have an S in the execute column. Okay. Also note that Vagrant is the group ownership. So what that means when I turn this bit on, if I do a CD directory and say touch file um, with the SGID bit on, we'll see now that it was created with the group ownership, not the normal ownership, which should be root. So to kind of highlight this, what we're going to do is come back over here. I'm going to take the set GID bit off. So I'm going to do a chmod my G minus S here, directory. And then with that off, again, seeing here that it's not on that bit, go into directory and touch file, no, GID here. Now note that it is created with the root group ownership. Okay, again, it's taking off of the user that executes the permissions, right? So, all right. And then lastly, the sticky bit. So sticky bit's gonna be a chmod O plus T, right? And so real quick, I wanna show you something here. Oh, let's D temp, uh, let's do, yeah. So. Temp is kind of the, the easiest example where we find a sticky bit in use, right? Temp, everybody should be able to write to it for temporary files. Um, but it would, it would not be great if a user can go in and delete all of the, the files in there that weren't their own, right? Now, of course, root supersedes a lot of this. So if you were the root user, already a privileged user, a lot of this doesn't apply. This really does apply to unprivileged users or just regular users on the system. And we'll notice here that we see, again, that T at the end of that. So let's, see, let's take a look at what this looks like from the perspective of, of different users. So I'm going to home vagrant. I should have a directory in here, test, let's see here. Do, okay. Now for this test directory, we, let's set permissions up and let's do this. Let's go ahead and uh, chmod, we'll do 755, which is pretty standard for test. And then we're going to set the sticky bit for this directory, right? So chmod O plus T for test. Okay, notice here you have sticky bit. Now what I want to be able to do here is create, or give, give the group ownership. I'm gonna change it a little bit here. I'm gonna say ch own. I'm going to say for the group to be vagrant for tests. Okay. Let me see here we have the group ownership of vagrant, and then I'm going to do a ch mod and give everybody in the group full permission. So seven, seven, five for tests. Okay. You know, just building slowly here for our example. All right. So now we have read, write, execute for all the groups. So anybody in the vagrant group should be able to read, write, and execute files in there, okay? And actually when I did that, I reset the other bitch to, to five, so re-execute. Let me change that back. So chmod group plus, uh, so you know, other plus t 
test. There we go. All right, back to team. Okay. Um, I'll explain why that happened here in just the next step. Uh, so now we have read and uh, the sticky bit set for the group there. Okay. So let's see here. Let's see, what do you do I have on here? Uh -huh. Okay. So I gave this at Texas Linux Fest. So I do have a Texas Linux Fest user. We'll use that. Uh, let's go to SU dash vagrant. Okay. So now as a vagrant user, I go into test. And let's say I touch file vagrant. And I'll on that. I have the vagrant user. So now if I exit out of that and SU to Texas Linux Fest, and I go to home vagrant test. Let's see here. Ah, there we go. That's the example I want to use. We'll use we'll use this one here, TXLF2. Let's let's kind of set that back up here. SU dash vagrant. And let's go into home TXLF2. There we go. So here we have a number of files here. ID vagrant. Okay. So here my vagrant user is part, the groups are for vagrant and for text Linux Fest. So just a slight uh, twist on this demo here. So we have, I'm part of both groups. So what that means is if I look at this file here, come up one directory, I should be able to read, write, execute as the group ownership, right? So I should go to delete files, edit files, things like that. So let's go into text Linux Fest 2 and let's try to rm file 2. Not permitted. Well, Okay, that makes sense. That's kind of what we're hoping for because the sticky bit says, if I don't own the file, I can't delete it. But can I edit it? Well, the I file two, say, hello world. Uh, this is update two. Save that. I can do that, right? So I can edit the file cat file two. Now, here's a caveat to this. While I can't remove that file, file two, there is nothing stopping me from echo file two. All right, so be wary of that. There's nothing stopping me from emptying out the file or zeroing out the file. But what it does mean is I cannot delete the file if I do not own it. Okay, so it's gonna, I'm gonna take the sticky bit off and kind of redo the demo here. So as a root user, I'm gonna do a chmod and I'm gonna do a uh, other minus t. So I'm taking away the sticky bit, txlf2. Now we see here that we have our normal execute bit. So now as the vagrant user, again, because I have, I am part of the Texas Linux Fest group, I'm going to home txlf2. Now I should be able to leave a file given that I have group permissions on this. So rm file three. Again, without the protection of the sticky bit, I am able to remove that file successfully, okay? So that's where even though a group ownership will allow me to otherwise remove a file, having a sticky bit on there says only the owner of the file can delete the file, okay? And then, so earlier, when I did a chmod, for example, 755, it reset the permissions on that directory. Now, we talked about earlier how the read, write, execute has a, a value of four, two, and one. Well, the same thing is for the special bits. 